I learned something. I learned something crucial, so I want to share it with you. Here's what I learned. When a tree is severely blown down in the storm, doesn't break and doesn't fall all the way down, just gets that leaning tower of Giza to it, right? You understand that without an external force, meaning by man, a crane, or another opposite wind, but without an external force, that tree cannot be righted. The tree will not, over time, grow itself straight. Give that tree enough time, it'll straighten itself out. Wrong. Once a tree has been tilted from the wind, it will continue to grow in that direction for the rest of its life. Unless an external force straightens it up. Let me talk about an athlete. Take a person who wants to become a gymnast. Little boy, seven years old, inspired by the Ninja Turtles, wants to become a gymnast. It, do you expect that little boy to become an Olympic gymnast without a coach? A coach to not only spot him and get him to understand the scaling process of developing some of those really tough skills? Do you understand that gymnastics is, is a sport where there's a lot of rules as well as a bunch of difficult skills and maneuvers that you can kind of jumble together to create your routine. You need to have eyes on it. You need to have somebody help you critique and adjust. It would be so impossible to become an Olympic level gymnast without a coach, without someone helping you direct it, an external force assisting you. We, we don't know how to do gymnastics without a coach. No matter how much your heart desires, it's just too hard to learn some of those skills without a coach. It's no matter how much the tree wants to stand itself up, it just can't on its own. It needs some sort of external force. Let me talk about something that's really interesting. I've heard some folk debate that we have free will. And, and, and this is something that truly separates us from the animal kingdom. Our, our ability to choose what we want to do with our lives. The ability to choose and think forward and, and plan for the future. And, and take care of others around us from a selfless or selfish point of view, whether you've got gain in it or not, we are different than the other animals in the animal kingdom because of our free will, because of our ability to make choices. Our actions are from our choices, our decisions that we make, that solely we make. The thoughts that we have are our thoughts and, and what we choose to dwell on, what we choose to, to continually think about. That is a result of our own decisions, as a result of our own doing. The free will gives the person the choice to act on their thoughts. And what I recently learned was incredibly eye-opening to me in that when God created Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, they were perfect. They were, they were designed in God's image. They were sinless. There was no sin in the Garden of Eden. There was no shame. There was no reason to cover. There was nothing to hide. Everything was exposed and everything was good. Adam worked to keep the garden. He named all the animals. He had dominion over the entire animal kingdom with his partner, Eve, they had this great thing going for them in the garden. You see, God allowed Adam and Eve the opportunity to leave the garden. They weren't prisoners. They weren't dropped into the garden 
with locked doors. Understand this for a second. I don't think anyone's ever broken this down to you because this is the first time I've heard it. The garden had an exit door and it was unlocked. Adam and Eve could leave at any point in time. They were not forced to stay in the garden. An external force. You see, the natural way of Adam and Eve was sinless. Like God. Meaning they were like God. God is sinless. God is no blame. The devil was so jealous of the pinnacle creation of God. He deceived a plan. He came up with a plan. He conspired a way to trick God's pinnacle creation out of jealousy to prove something. And that is where you see in the Bible the bruising of God's heel as God crushes the head of the serpent. What you got to understand is there was an external force provided by Satan in the garden that persuaded Eve to sin because it was an open door. There was free will to leave. There was one rule. Don't eat from that tree of knowledge because surely you will die. That was the exit door. Surely you understand there are rules. You don't have to stay here. You break that rule, you're out. They knew there was a choice. There was free will. There had to be free will in order for it to be true, in order for it to be honest. I can't force you to be my friend. I can't force you to believe this stuff. That's your free will. That's your ability to choose based off of what you understand from it. So let me say this another way. <clears throat> the fall turned work into toil because now we're working for ourselves. We're working for ego. We're trying to make this great life under the sun. And as King Solomon has said in Ecclesiastes, everything under the sun is meaningless and without purpose. The only thing that gives us purpose is being tethered to God, which is outside of everything under the sun. So only a life lived for God, for Jesus, provides purpose and meaning. Everything else under the sun is meaningless and vanity. And vanity is but a vapor, is temporary, is not meaningful. So, <clears throat> what we have learned is that the fall turned work into toil because work was a part of the garden. That's an okay thing. Work is okay. It became toil because sin entered the picture. <clears throat> We are born into sin, right? Anyone that's got kids, anyone that's looked after kids, anyone that understands anything about themselves understands you didn't have to learn how to steal. You just take what you want, especially a two or a three-year-old. When they want something, snatch and grab, bro. The two or three-year-old, when they're hungry, when they are cranky, they will hit you. They will slap you. No, I didn't teach my kids that crap. They didn't see me doing that crap. I don't have to teach y'all how to sin. I don't have to teach you how to be bad. I don't teach you how to be mean. I don't have to teach you how to bite and pinch and scream and be entitled and be jealous. I, can't, I don't have to teach you that stuff. You were born with that. That is our sinful nature we are born with. From that moment on, it's, it's now something we have to learn. We have to learn how to harbor that anger. We have to learn how to harbor that immaturity. We have to learn how to become civilized. We have to learn how to, we have to learn manners. We have to learn etiquette. We have to learn whatever it is that our society considers to be normal. Whatever that is, to each their own. So here's the thing. Sin is a part of our fallen nature. That is natural. It is natural to sin. For someone to find Jesus in the dark, praise God, hallelujah, for those who have, for those people to turn their back to their flesh and choose instead, man, I want to run with Jesus. I want to live more like Jesus. I'm tired of living this way. That's unnatural. The sinner is natural in this habitat that we call life in this, in this life on earth. That's, that's our natural habitat as a sinner. 
It is unnatural to find Jesus and want to change by connecting yourself to the vine and bearing the fruit. It is unnatural to be a Jesus believer in this world, in this life. It is unnatural. <clears throat> this is the devil's playground. This earth is the devil's control. God is ultimately in control. But sin, us being born into sin, that's, that's, that's the devil's access, man. The devil has access to our hearts. The devil has access to our minds. We have to make the choice daily, sometimes hourly, sometimes by the minute. We have to make the choice because of the conviction in our heart. We battle the flesh every day because we have learned, oh, there's a better way. There's a better way through Jesus. There's nothing I can do in this living flesh that will make me right with God. My salvation, my belief in Jesus is the only thing that I have providing my eternity in heaven. There are things that will make my life easier because of accepting Jesus and because of wanting to live for Jesus in this life that will bring me peace. And all those things are very clear and very evident and they're written in the Bible and they come true when the Bible is a part of your life and can come true, can come alive. You, you have not because you ask not. You can't see the Bible come alive if you don't have it in your life. It is unnatural to find Jesus and accept Jesus in this life. It's hard. It's unnatural. It was unnatural for Eve to sin. It took an external force for her to do so. So it takes an external force for you to understand Jesus. You're not going to figure this stuff out on your own. A gymnast will not make it to the Olympics without a coach. You've all, we all have got to plug in to some form of Bible study, whether it's online or, or physically with the group or at a church. You don't have to go to church to have a relationship with Jesus, but going to church helps. Like going to a gym helps because you, it's easier to do it with a group than to do it on your own in the garage. Trust me, the group thing works so long as the group is doing stuff that's your level that you feel comfortable with. <clears throat> a lot of people have an issue with scaling. A lot of people have an issue with their ego. So they won't even show up because they feel they can't do it at the level that everyone else is doing it. Man, if, pe if people only knew that the church was full of people who know nothing about Jesus to people who know a ton about Jesus and everyone in between, and the church is also full of people that know very little about Jesus that are going to heaven and people who know a ton about Jesus who are not going to heaven. They don't have a relationship. They know a lot, but it doesn't penetrate. It doesn't get in to their heart. It's just in their mind. They just spit it out. They sound smart. They're Bible educated, but they don't have a relationship. The, the tree doesn't bear the fruit and you can see the fruit and the believers who are connected to the vine. So what you got to understand, what I'm trying to say is, you need help to understand the Bible. No one's going to read the Bible and go, got it, done, next. Dude, you could read the Bible 15 times over again, still be learning things. You need to get hooked up with whatever medium it is that works for you. Whatever your love language it is, whatever it is that helps you understand something. Sometimes it's a video because you, you're a visual learner. Sometimes it's a podcast from somebody that understands things as that, that says it very well. I really like Pastor Chuck, uh, Chuck Swindoll. Man, he says it really good. There's a couple pastors out there, uh, the Three Circles Church. They've got some amazing stuff. They're Chasing the Wind series, one, two, three, four, five, six, all six weeks. Incredible knowledge. Incredible what you have to understand is it takes help. It takes help to understand relationship versus religion. Jesus came to this earth in the flesh so that he could teach, so he could help, so he could coach, so he could mentor, so he could show the tell, show, do method. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to show you. Now you go do. Man, this is stuff that we learn in business. 
it's fascinating to me how much of the Bible works in so much of your life. And that's where some of these incredible things have come from that we use every single day. Some of these businesses, some of these products, some of these uh, ways of life. What you got to understand is the Bible understands us to a T because it was written by our creator. It was written by God and 100% of the Bible is true. You can take 100% of the Bible as fact because everything, every minuscule detail that has irked somebody that they have tried to disproven, they've only proven 100% factual. There is nothing in the Bible that has been debunked, period. Everything has been proven accurate, true. It's important for you to understand a tree will not write itself without an external force. A man is not going to write himself without an external force. You have got to have something greater than what's under the sun. Everything under the sun is vanity. There has to be something stronger than you. And there's not a lot of people in my mind, there's nobody in my mind who is capable of me selling myself out to. I want to take on nobody's life. I'm jealous of no person and no thing that somebody has. I have fully submitted myself to Jesus in a sense that, man, that just makes the most amount of sense. Everything he does, everything he says, everything about the Bible just makes the most amount of sense from everything else I have witnessed. It's true. And who am I? Man, don't listen to me. Listen to King Solomon. Listen to King Solomon Ecclesiastes. Start there. There's a lot of pieces to life that people just, they, they, they listen to other people. They don't search it out for themselves. They don't dig it out for themselves and they just believe others. You have to learn this for yourself. You have to dig this out for yourself. You have to ask for help. The, the work you are going to put into this is going to teach you what you need to know. And that's going to develop the relationship. You're going to choose to accept Jesus because it makes sense to you and it just clicks. It turns on like a light. Or don't. <laughs> Or don't, the Bible doesn't say that everyone is going to heaven. It says only those who believe in the Son and Jesus are going to heaven. You have a choice. Back to the very beginning of this. Adam and Eve were not placed into a locked prison cell of the Garden of Eden saying, you can go anywhere you want and you just can't leave. That's not freedom. True love. Freedom, come and go. If you love me, truly love me, you will stay. I don't have to lock you in here. If you want true peace and true love, which is Jesus in your life, that open door is your free will. That open door is your choice. That's for you to walk through. That's the whole point of this conversation. You will never do this on your own. You're going to need external force. You're going to need some help from friends, some help from this video, some help from some other videos, some help from something else other than just you. Page one, Genesis. I mean, that's better than nothing, but good luck with that. Statistically, there's only so many people who are going to pick up the Bible and accept Jesus by reading it, by understanding it. Yes, it happens but you don't want to leave that to chance. This is far greater than anything else in your life. You don't want to just kind of try haphazardly to understand if Jesus truly is real in your heart or not. I can't make that decision for you. I can't knock on that door for you. I cannot open up the book and choose to take in the knowledge for you. What you do after you take in the knowledge will show. You can always tell a tree by the fruit it bears. Some trees look alike in winter. They don't bear no fruit. Spring, summer, fall, man, you can tell. 
So here's what I'm going to close with. There is much to be said about what you're living for. What do you live for? What, what, what are you waking up in the morning to do? Are you waking up? Are you satisfied if you hit a certain monetary goal? Are you satisfied if you hit a certain conditioning? Like, okay, I got these things done today. I'm at peace. Um, goal oriented. Okay, I got these tasks to do. I'm going to get this to-do list done. And I'm satisfied. You know, Jesus is in a debit card. And a lot of people get upset <clears throat> with God and blame God. Uh, every other religion blames God and says it's humanity that's got to work their way up to become God like themselves. Only Christians, only believers in Christ know that Jesus is hope and that we are the problem. I am the problem. I am the sinner. Jesus is my hope out of that, away from that. Eternity with Jesus absent from sin. Versus eternity in hell consumed by the darkness of sin. I would so much rather choose Jesus in the light, peace, sinless, streets paved in gold. I would so much prefer that. So you read the Bible and you go through it. Who are you really trying to impress with yourself? What are you really trying to do? And what is it? That is going to hold you back by accepting Jesus. Maybe everything changes in your life. Well, that's the point. People who are good people, who are very comfortable with their lives and make good money. They don't have any issues. Their kids are healthy, happy, smart, educated, good looking, all the fun things. Those good people don't really have a need for Jesus. Only, only weak and broken people need Jesus. Those are the people going to hell. The majority of them. It's sad. A lot of people who have been drug, bloody, beat to their just stubs. The people that have been drugged in the mud most of the time are being shown bits and pieces of Jesus through some form of challenge, through some form of, man, I, I don't know why this is happening to me. And if there's a way out of this, God, please help me. They, they find a spiritual nature in the, in the dark valleys of, of the blood and the dirt and the mud. How many people are looking for God at the top of a mountain, bro? How many people are looking for God at the top where nothing grows? Where there is nobody. It's very lonely at the top. There's nothing going on at the top. Not a lot of people praying out, Jesus save me, when they're at the top. So there's, there's things that happen in our life that bring us to our knees. There are people in our life that will show up at the exact time because when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. It takes an external force as it did, which created this whole thing in the first place. The external force of Satan caused Eve to sin. That cascaded into us being born into sin. There's nothing we can do about that. So it's unnatural for us to find Jesus, which is why there's a constant battle every day with the flesh. It's a very difficult thing, which is what makes it real. This is what makes it real. Man, you can't just show up on day one and give up and call yourself a gymnast the rest of your life because you went to gymnastics practice one day. That don't make you no gymnast. I don't know what, I don't know how many days it takes you at gymnastics practice to be able to say, hey, I'm a former gymnast. I don't know how many competitions, if any, I don't know. But I know it ain't on the first day. I know it the first day you can't just call yourself a gymnast. So there's a lot of pieces to the relationship as you are identified by either the work you do, the sports you play, the cars you drive, there are signs that we display in our life that show who and what we are, what we are into. And if you don't show the fruit, if you don't show Jesus in your life through the decisions you make, the speech coming out of your mouth, the things that you do, 
Dog, Jesus ain't in your heart. Jesus ain't in your life. You can you can about Jesus all you want, but if it's not shown, or or worse, you you ignore it, you deny it. You're nah, nah, nah. I don't need Jesus. I don't need that stuff. Get away from me, like like it's some multi level Amway snake oil. Dog, that's not the case, bro. This is a very specific thing you need to understand for yourself. Choose your decision. That's the whole thing. It's free will, but you still gotta understand this. You still gotta hear this from a standpoint of, man, let me talk to you, bro. Because we're, we're normal people here, man. What are you doing each day? Waking up, going to work, coming home. What are you doing that for? Are you going to leave this huge legacy? Are you going to leave a bunch? So what? King Solomon will explain all this to you. I don't have to. It's not about you or me. Let's listen to Solomon because he was the greatest at it all. Lived the greatest life. Had, had the most success. Had the most Wit, wisdom, education was the most charming, handsome, had all the crap, lived every bit of life you could possibly live under the sun. And he said, Pfft. if it's untethered from God, it sucks. It's vanity. It's garbage. You can keep it. How many rich people on their deathbed have a few things to say that contradict kind of the way they live, meaning, ah, money really wasn't that great. All that stuff really wasn't that great. Would have been cool to have more time with this or that, my family, this or that, or love. It gets more sentimental, gets more real, gets more heartfelt. Man, we got eternity in our hearts. We got a God-sized hole in our hearts that only God can fill. We try to stuff all sorts of things, fame, money, wisdom, education, houses, cars, all that crap, dude. All that stuff that we think is going to make us complete. When only God can make us complete. But it's unnatural. It's unnatural to think this way. It's unnatural to talk and walk this way. That's why people, ah! That's why it's a choice, bro. If it was just so easy, wouldn't we all just do it? If it was just so easy, we, it wouldn't be this way. And we're definitely not programmed. We're definitely not robots. That's for darn sure. We absolutely have free will. Hope that makes sense to you. Love you. Peace.